Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mike Colleen at MikeColeen.com. All right, people, so we have made some milestones. The reason I say we is because it's because of all of you guys. So the numbers are definitely skyrocketing. So about two months ago, all of a sudden, everything just took off. And it's like, I used to get one or two subscribers a week, maybe a month. And now I'm getting about 10, 15, 20 subscribers a day. So the channel is taking off. So when you hit certain markers, YouTube will send you a thing on your admin like this one, 2,000 subscribers. So we finally got over that. So the big one is getting 4,000 public watch hours and we just went over this last night. So I want to thank you guys very, very much for this. Now, what does this mean? Well, there's basically two major requirements. Number one, you have to get over 1,000 subscribers, which I got well over a year ago, year and a half ago. But the 4,000 hours, that was one hell of an achievement. I couldn't, <laughs> I just couldn't get over it. Now we are finally over it. You have to get 4,000 watch hours within a 365 day period, which we went over. Now, what does that mean? That means we get the apply button, which means we can apply to the YouTube partnership program. And what that opens up is I start, I can earn money. You can get money from, you know, advertising, when people click on the ads. So when you guys click on the ads, what will happen is I get a certain small percentage, like one or two cents or something really small. And I think another, there's a couple other things that open up that you can do, which I don't want to go into detail. I think one of them is I can put my dating relationship books below the video itself. I believe it's called a carousel. I believe that's one of the options, which is what I really wanted. Now in my Twitter, or now called X, uh, when Elon Musk took over, they, get, they gave that to me right away. It was like an automatic, whereas before, they wouldn't give that to me for nothing. So here's one of the things, a theory I have about why certain people are attracted to my channel and not others. So there's a couple things that I'm doing that I learned in NLP to help you guys to understand uh, the teachings, the material better. So one of the things I attempt to do is not go too fast to talk with a fairly comfortable voice. Sometimes I get excited though and I'm just like, man, I've got to put this out there. And so, I, I don't know, I mean, sometimes I do talk fast enough, but I think there's, there's an overall comfort to my voice. So I think... Alright, so one, one of the things that I teach in my course for men, um, Cracked Female Code, is how to be emotionally grounded. And what we do is we work with... Uh, breath work how to calm yourself how to do breathe deeper and just just to breathe and relax the other thing that i've done um with myself and also i teach my clients is to ha is how to be emotionally grounded okay now for most men they're like well what's that Well, it's the very thing that allows your body just to open up and relax. And it also allows your voice to drop down and and to be what I call to resonate in a, in a natural way. So now you'll get some guys though, well, they make their voice like they're sounding down in their belly, but it's actually up in their head. It's fake. Okay. It's tight. So what we do is we help you to learn how to relax and open up. And therefore, your voice just comes out in a more natural way, which allows people to feel comfortable when they're around you. Okay, so here's another thing. Probably we'll call this number two, I guess. Is I notice a lot of these uh, people that are making videos on narcissist abuse are very logical people. And they're giving you steps, like step one, step two, step three. And they're just kind of running through it. They're giving, okay, they're giving you a logical... Okay, gaslighting. One of the things that narcissists do is they gaslight you, and then they, they give you the definition or meaning of gaslighting, and that's it. One of the things we learned during a uh, trainer's training in NLP, it's, uh, it's a, it's a five-week training. It's a third, third or fourth training, depending on what company you go through, is they teach you how to, to teach things, like break it down, like here, here's what this is, here's what that is, but then they teach you how to use metaphors, stories, and examples and then to teach it through that because if the person can understand the story the metaphor the example then they can understand the technique or the teaching okay so that's one of the things that i do a lot 
Funny thing is, I'm, I'm actually not doing it in this video. <laughs> All right, so as I'm, I've actually got a list of things. That's why this video comes across different. But there's things that are popping up right now. Like there's other techniques. Like I'm doing submodality shifts. I'm doing something called reframing. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I'm doing. So I'm using my tone and my voice to shift things to where your brain can pop. See, people get stuck. Like you can get stuck in fear, anxiety, or panic. So my, my job is to pop you out of that so you can see it from a greater, bigger perspective. So you can see that it's, it's, not, it's not real. You're not really stuck in it, okay? And it essentially shows you how to get out of it. So if I keep doing it over and over and over, you pop out so many times, you're like, oh, I can do this on my own now. And that is the ultimate goal, is so you can eventually pop out on your own. Now, telling stories and metaphors is an old, ancient way that the, um, oh, oh, forgive me, I'm not, I don't have the, quite the right words for this, but the old, ancient way before they had books and writing and stuff like that, it's how they memorized the stories of their tribes to keep the teachings alive okay so if you could remember the story you could remember the teaching and you could learn the teaching much easier okay so that's one of the ways that they had passed down i think it was even the old testament was passed down that way for many many uh years hundreds of you know centuries actually so one of the goals of going to trainers training is to learn how to communicate in different ways to where your clients or the crowd understand you, okay? So in your head, you have a message or you're trying to explain something to someone else. Now, getting that information across is a challenge because words and communication are not, they're, they're, they're not as effective as most people would think they are. This is why people have so, much pro so many problems in communication. So you have to learn how to communicate effectively. So using stories, metaphors, examples, reframing, shifting submodalities, and all these things that I'm doing in, in these videos helps people to understand a lot better. So one of my favorite uh, comments that I receive on my channel is when people say, hey, I've, I've heard this a million times or literally 50 times and I didn't even know that I didn't understand what this meant until I found your channel. The, you know, they'll say things like the way you break things down adds clarity or it's like I finally understand what this means. So as a young man, I was very fortunate to have uh, made myself go to these NLP trainings and the funny thing is. I can't really tell you why I did it. I just know that I, I think I had personal problems. You know, I was dealing with narcissist abuse, not really even knowing what it was. And, and I don't think they knew what it was back then. But I started going to these NLP trainings and it was all about communication. It was about conscious communication, unconscious communication, consciousness. So it's, it's a th very powerful therapeutic tool that takes psychology to the next level. Okay. And so most men in general we just suck at communication and we do but most men don't know it until they take an nlp training or they take my course cracked female code and they're like man i didn't even know that any of this stuff existed yet women do a, a fair percentage of a lot of the stuff that you learn in these courses whether it's conscious or unconscious and men don't so as a young man in my i think i was 20 years old or even 19 years old when i went to my first seminar here I was in my early 20s learning the master keys to communication and understanding and how to communicate in a way that the other person can understand it with clarity. I was learning at such a young age, so this really was a blessing in disguise, not even realizing what I was getting involved with. So in general, most men just absolutely struggle with communication, not even knowing that they're struggling with communication. Like, well, I said, A, why doesn't she understand that? It's because she's speaking in a different language. She processes in a different way. You have to communicate in a way that she can understand. And vice versa. Okay, it's not just a one-way road. The other thing is regardless of whether you're a male or female communicating, do not take the responsibility of the other person's job of listening to understand because this is where narcissists love to mess with empaths. They love to purposely not understand or to interrupt you before you, you finish, you know, the, the 
the completing the thought or the idea or developing the picture and they create confusion so if you run into someone who's just not even trying to understand you trying to hear what you're saying boom just walk away just don't waste your time with them that is one of the most important communication tools that i learned like if i'm interacting with someone and they're trying to say well you're not explaining it well it's like well are you listening to understand because that is a huge part of communication like okay listening to understand is the number one communication skill period end of sentence all right so here's another one that i, I get a lot and i really love this guy says uh one out Strider. So I just want to say I really appreciate your perspective and advice regarding confronting a narcissist. It's o it's the only channel I know with this unique advice. And it makes sense as opposed to the majority of people on YouTube advising you to back off peacefully, peacefully and not fight them when everything screams in, in us to fight back, right? Like, okay, for example, here's something that just has blown my mind. You get these people with their MDs, their medical degrees, their psychologists and doctors, and they're saying, back away slowly. Don't let them know that you uh, uncovered their mask and blah, 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 blah. And yet I'm like, why? Well, because then they might go on the attack. They might hurt you. Uh, yeah. And here's something that I've never, ever heard in three years of listening to other videos and listening to my clients and other people. I've never heard this from one single person. And I want to ask and see if you have. Not one of these doctors say, if they harm you, if they attack you, if they harass you, call the police, tell the manager, tell the owner of the business that you work for. Like, not one person has ever said, report them, get a restraining order. You know, you don't, it's like, it's like all of a sudden it's like, well, what a narcissist above the law or something like, no, they're not. Call the damn police. All right. So here's my point. I really, really highly suspect that these experts, that these doctors that are talking about narcissist abuse, that are telling you to back away slowly, don't, don't do nothing, don't let them know, that is, number, number one, that is absolutely the worst advice you could give someone, because here's why. A predator goes after those that they perceive as weak and an easy target. It See, look, narcissists don't want hard targets. A hard target is someone that talks back. A hard tar target is something that throws their blame right back on them, throws their shame right back on them. A hard target is someone in public who will call them out on their bullshit in front of a crowd of people. See, they don't want, they want you to be so beat down that you're afraid to do it. Let me, let me tell you something I'm telling you right now. If you call them on their shit in public and shame them in public, they will never come around you. Now here's what happens. If you're this easy target that they can walk on, stomp on, treat like shit, beat down verbally, they become more aggressive. That's when they become physically aggressive. If you stop them in their tracks, they'll be like, oh shit, can't mess with this person. And they'll never escalate to that point. They'll never, they'll never even come close. So when you back away quietly, they're, they're, it's, like, it's, like, it's like a robber going into a store and no one does anything. Well, he's going to come back and do it again. He's going to come back and take more and, and everyone's just watching and letting him do it. That's essentially the way it is in California right now. There was another new law that was just passed this year in January, February that was put into action and like people like the owners of stores like I'm not allowed to touch them at all we can't do anything and then on top of it, the police say don't call us because this is a waste of resources so what's my point crime is going through the roof younger kids kids in high school are doing it because they're like well you can't do nothing the, the way they've changed these laws is worst case scenario if I as long as I, I think it's under a thousand dollars if you don't steal anything over a thousand dollars it's like a parking ticket literally it's a freaking uh you get a uh, they write you up if they catch you if they if they want to chase you which they usually don't they're like well it's not a big and the cops will say well it's not a big deal All right, so here's number two. Um, one thing that a lot of you don't realize is a lot of these people on these channels, uh, even some of the doctors, they are narcissists. And that's why they're telling you to back away slowly. The absolute worst thing a person can tell you is to back away quietly. Don't be aggressive. Don't be, don't piss them off. No, because nar narcissists, 
number one, they're extremely sensitive people. If you go on the attack, especially verbally, and shame them and humiliate them, call them on the shit, they they will run for the hills. They don't want to be around that shit. If you go to the police, if you get a restraining order, if you do all, they're like, ah, oh, fuck. Like they don't want people to know what they are. They don't want people to know what they're doing at all. They want to keep things hush hush publicly. Now, remember, narcissists literally are predators, okay? They will literally stalk you to figure, your, figure, your out, figure you out, sorry. Just like a predator, like a lion, tiger, or bear will literally stalk their prey, and they'll, they're looking to figure out who's the weakest one, who's the quietest one, all right? They're not going to go out after the most aggressive, loudest, most aggressive one. That's the last one they're going to think of going after. All right, so here's the deal. In real life, if you get a mountain lion or a cougar or, I don't know, some kind of predator, right? If you make a loud noise, if you stand up tall, if you wave your arms around, yell and scream. In fact, I put an image of a guy from a video on YouTube recently where a moose was running at him and his girlfriend was going to attack them. He literally raised, grabbed the stick, raised it above his head, and started yelling and screaming and moving towards the moose. And the moose was like, oh, shit. It got scared. It turned around. Boom. It bolted. So in real life, when you yell, predators get scared. It confuses them. Like, Whoa, I thought this was an easy prey. And that's the look narcissists get on their face when you call them on their bullshit. Is they get this lost, confused look. And what it is, they're panicking inside going, oh, shit. So being aggressive is your best freaking defense. Same thing in football. Your best, your best defense is a good offense. As long as you have the ball and you're moving forward, they're on the defense, and that's where you want them to be. So number three on this specific subject. Right now, narcissist abuse is a popular thing. So the problem with that is you get a lot of these psychologists and professors and people that went to college and read a lot of books. And they're going, oh, I'll help you with narcissist abuse. And they don't know a damn thing about it. For example, these doctors are either narcissists themselves, constantly sending the message to the empaths, be weak, back away slowly. Don't make a problem for us. You know, make it easy for us to attack you. Hell no. Now, if they're not narcissists, they just don't know what they're talking about, number one, because they haven't gone through the goddamn nightmare darkness of hell for years, year after year after year, to the point where they isolated themselves for years on how to figure out how to deal with this, how to heal from this. I would recommend that you go to an actual coach, therapist, doctor, or whatever, who has dealt with this on a deep level on themselves personally because you can't understand it people that have not been through this they can't even relate to what you're saying i mean how many of you have been through where you're trying to explain this to a friend and they they look at you like you know are you sure there's not something wrong with you like like that just doesn't make any sense like why would someone do something like that that just like it doesn't make any sense well that's the thing about narcissists they don't make any sense so my point is a lot of your friends or a lot of these people you try to explain this to, they, they just looked at you like, man, you're like, they, some of them may have said it and some of them may have just gave you the look of like, yeah, I think you're a little bit off there, buddy, because they haven't dealt with it. Well, luckily now, because narcissist abuse is becoming very popular all over social media, these people who haven't dealt with it, they still don't understand it, but they now are realizing, like, okay, well, there's something going on with this, and it sounds like it's a serious issue, so you're being taken more seriously. But they still can't relate because they haven't gone through it themselves. So the message here is, if you're going to work with someone to help you through this, find someone who they themselves have gone through it, whether they're a professional doctor, life coach, or, or someone who specializes in narcissist abuse, narcissist abuse and healing. So here's my point. When you back down, when you walk away slowly, there's no pain for them. There's no suffering. They're no, so it's like, what would stop them? They become more aggressive and they start doing worse and worse things to you. But when you fight back, they're like, oh shit, you can't mess with this person. And that's the message you want to get across. And you know what? As I'm talking about this right now, I think this is probably the number one reason why people are coming to my channel is because I'm telling you like, no, you're doing the worst possible thing by running away.
or by walking away quietly or backing away slowly and all that bullshit, you're making them more aggressive when you do that. I'm also getting the message across is that they're way, way more afraid of you than you are of them. And when you realize that, that's when the game turns 180 degrees in your favor. And now suddenly they don't want to come around. Next thing you know, you start doing your push-ups and your sit-ups, you start going for walks, you start to go for hill climbs, you start lifting weights, you might join a gym and learn how to box, you might start sparring, you might start, you know, swinging some sticks around, you know what I'm saying? The other thing I think the reason why people like my channel is I reveal the truth. Even though it's considered, oh, what's the word down? There's a word for it. Like, you're not allowed to say that. Like, I'll, I'll flat out say, like, there are narcissists in church. There are church leaders, uh, narcissists that are in the position of power within churches. Because a lot of people go to churches with this open, vulnerable heart thinking, well, I'm in a safe space. No, you are not. They are. That's not a safe space. Oh, the word's taboo. Like, you're not supposed to say stuff like that. And here's why, because the narcissists don't want you. Because look, the narcissist number one goal is to disarm you. They want to make you vulnerable. They want to make you weak. And they want to give you the perception that, oh, you can open up around these people in this space. So what's one of the perfect places to go that, that people would perceive like, oh, that's a safe space? The church. Okay. Another one is psychologists and psychiatrists. You just blindly go, oh, well, they're good people. No, there's a lot of people that became psychiatrists that are just cold blooded, left logical people, and they don't have emotions. They don't care. They just want to make money. I mean, humans are infallible. You'll have some people that are very, very good people in the church. You have some people that are very, very good people in the therapy world and psychology, psychiatry, etc. But then you get these people that they have their own issues. Like they're angry at their dad. They're angry at their mom. They're angry at their childhood. And so like, okay, some people will become psychologists because it's their egotistical way. Like, oh, I'm smarter than you. That, that doesn't make you smarter than someone. It just means you learn some tools, some skills, and some understandings that other people didn't study. So what about someone who's an electrical engineer, an architect who built the Sears Tower, which by the way, my my step grandpa actually was, a, was one of the architects on the building, which is kind of cool. All right, so here's another reason, and this is actually the reason why I made this video in the first place. So I was talking about, I use metaphors and stories and examples, okay, to, to get the message across clearly where your brain finally clicks and goes, oh, I finally understand what that phrase or that word means. Well, like even the word gaslighting for years, I heard it in psychology class, went right over my head, had no idea, right? So using, like I said, examples, metaphors, and stories, if you can understand the story, you can understand the teaching. Okay, that's just one of the techniques that we learned. So another one, this goes back to this in a second, is the music. I use music in my videos. I just one day I just didn't care. I used to just do it as an intro. But for some reason, I feel really comfortable with music. Okay, now I know some people don't. They're like, hey, you know, like I had one person say, hey, I really don't like the music. And then yet on the same video, three other people are like, man, I really love the music. Okay, so logical people are not really going to like the right brain stuff especially the music now right brain people they love the music because it taps you in it tunes you in okay this video is getting way too long so i'm just gonna go real quick i do have a list here so um all right so one of the things i already said i speak the unspoken truth which is taboo like like they're also in churches etc um okay here's a big one which i've kind of mentioned in some of the other video uh before the comments says, I'm talking about destroying the narcissist, going on the attack and never backing down. In other words, standing up for yourself, speaking up for yourself, fighting back, destroying narcissists. That's a message you don't hear from other people. You just don't like, oh, back away slowly, be a coward, be a wimp. And like, who, who wants to hear that? We're sick and tired of getting beaten down and then being told, now just walk away and forgive them and act like nothing ever happened while they go on to the next person and the next and the next and destroying and damaging. Hell no. Get the message out. Tell people who that person is. Let them know. You know, tell people of, about what narcissist abuse is so they can defend themselves. Tell them to speak up. Tell them to stand out, etc. I mean, 
I think the whole idea of telling people to basically be a coward and back away slowly, it's just like, who wants to hear that? Who wants to get beaten down, attacked, and, and destroyed, and then be told by your damn psychologist or therapist, some doctor, back away slowly, be a wimp, be a coward, and then in the next session, well, you know what your problem is? You just not, you don't have self-esteem, you don't have confidence. Jeez, I wonder why, doc, because you keep telling me to be a pussy. So I think the message, stand up for yourself, fight back, be strong, etc. I think a lot of you have been wanting to hear this on an unconscious level for years, and yet you've been listening to all these ex supposed experts, even the ones with their doctor degree, on how to back away. And like something inside you just was not resonating. Something inside you was just like, man, it just made you feel weak, and you, f and you fucking hated it. So finally, someone comes along and says, no, screw that. Throw that in the garbage. Stand up for yourself. Stand firm. Be strong. Screw that bullshit. You know, there's one thing I realized about two years ago is I realized a psychologist, therapist, doctor that has never actually truly gone through the hells of dealing with a narcissist. They, in a million years, they couldn't understand you. They, they, in fact, they're pro you've probably gone to therapist in the way past before this got popular like it is now on YouTube and social media. And they probably said, oh, well, you know, you've got uh, delusions or you've got fucking this mental problem. Here, take some pills. They couldn't even fucking relate. And what's worse, they're just viewing you as you're the fucked up person, something's wrong with you, so gotta give you pills or gotta give you therapy, and, and they're looking at their pocketbook like, okay, we gotta schedule another appointment next week, see you next week for another $200 from your insurance company. One of the things we learned at NLP, is it was, it was a five week training, it was the one in Hawaii, not the trainer's training, it was the one before that, the master practitioner is Dr. Tad James, he had, was speaking on this, he goes, look man, he goes, one of the things about people that go to uh, Western uh, colleges for psychology and psychiatry, you're, you're literally, we were going through the hypnosis section and learning like, well, what is hypnosis? One of it is just repeating something over and over uh, again until it finally, your brain just accepts it. Well, this is a narcissistic tool. And so he was talking to the psychologist, which by the way, all the psychologists and psychiatrists sat in the back of the room for some reason. <laughs> And so um, he had said, a lot of you are just flat out trained for year after year. You know, I think he said eight years or however long they go to school that if someone scratches the right cheek with their pointer finger two times within an hour, that means they've got some kind of dissociated disorder or some kind of anxiety issue when it's like, no, they're just scratching their cheek. It was no big fucking deal. But you would literally write this down in your notes like, oh, he's got a uh, anxiety disorder, panic disorder. He's got a semi whatever disorder. And he was going on and on. Or, or like if somebody repeats something two or three times an hour, like, oh, they have grandeur delusion or they have this and that. And it's like a totally normal thing. After about 15 minutes of talking about this, a couple of the doctors raised their hand. They said, I got to be honest with you. You know, during our trainings, we were literally taught that if you pulled your hair, or scratched your face more than once or twice, or if you, you were fidgety or if you did whatever, like we were taught that you had some kind of disorder and we would literally write it in your chart and a lot of times prescribe medication for it. And these, and one after one, God, and they would, and here's what it came down to. They said, I can't believe how many people's lives that I screwed up for years, decades, or maybe their lifetime by telling them that they have this mental disorder. Because people, when they went back to their families and told them, like, people reject you. People turn against you and like, oh, don't want to be around that person. Oh, they're mentally ill. It's like, no, I scratched my fucking face twice, dickhead. You know what I'm realizing? It's probably the attitude I have that you guys like. All right, so here's the deal. You may not want to hear it, but it's the truth. Believe it or not, but some doctors are racists. Some doctors are sexist. Some doctors are prejudiced. Hey, you might ha be the wrong gender and may not realize that this person doesn't like your gender. They may have had an issue when they were a child with your gender. You may not have realized like maybe they have some kind of issue with your skin color, okay? Now, I'm not saying all doctors are like this or all priests or pastors or whatever. Some of them are good people, but you cannot sit there and go, well, well, they're a doctor. 
they're a priest or a pastor therefore they're all good that is just not reality your job as an empath as a person who's been going through narcissist abuse in fact i would say one of the biggest lessons and it's almost like your life purpose like one of what was one of the biggest things you came here to learn is to stop putting people in boxes not not in a judgmental way but in a way like oh i'm safe over here no there's good and bad people everywhere, in every group, in every family, in every situation, period, end of sentence. Remember, what's my number one rule? See the good and the bad in everyone. It's okay to see bad in people, okay? What light workers, light, you know, light warriors, empaths, healers one of our biggest problems is we just want to see the good in everyone we just want to we look through this filter and only see the good that is not healthy that's very very dangerous so when you're dealing with your psychiatrist or psychologist or a doctor give them put them through the narcissist test just pay attention are they shaming you are they blaming you or do they have this negative attitude and you're like wait a minute i just met this person what's the problem just get up and walk out say i don't feel comfortable don't even don't even tell them that don't even say say you know what i, I think it'd be best if i find another doctor do not explain yourself okay or end the session and just never go back find another doctor okay find someone you feel comfortable with believe it or not but you're allowed to do that i know sounds crazy right In other words, just don't blindly accept that these are good people. Some of them are, they are, but some of them are not. And maybe they're good for some people, but not good for you for whatever reason. It doesn't matter. It's okay to find someone that works well with you. That's all I'm saying. And the other thing I'm really, really saying is you have to keep your awareness up. You have to stay tuned in. You can't just blindly accept someone because they have this plaque on the wall or this name tag on, okay? So just put them through the test. Pay attention to what they're saying. Pay attention to your intuition. Like, how do you feel? Do you feel like you're being shamed, embarrassed, belittled? Are you being discarded? Are you? Are, is, is what you're saying being devalued? Put them through the narcissist test. It doesn't mean they're a narcissist. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But maybe they're doing things. You're like, you know, that's actually not something that's cool or that's not healthy. So move on. I think the final thing that I'm going to say now, the reason why a lot of you guys might like this channel, is that I'm talking about victory. I'm talking about you winning this battle. Other people don't talk about, not only am I saying stand up, fight back, I'm saying, hey, you're actually more powerful here. You're the one that's going to win, and all you have to do is A, B, C, and D, and boom, the narcissist runs and hides. I don't hear that in other channels. I don't hear people talking about victory and winning and here's how you win and here they're just all back away slowly just be quiet don't let anyone know just hide under a rock like fuck that throw that rock on the goddamn narcissist's head and for any narcissist are actually listening no i don't mean that literally physically i mean that metaphorically and if you don't know what a metaphor is you're probably on the wrong channel <laughs> Okay, fine. Um, it's like someone in class said, what is a metaphor? And everyone started laughing. So metaphor, again, it's like a story or an example. Like I just said, like, you know, instead of hiding under the rock, throw that rock on top of the narcissist's head. It's just a metaphor, okay? It just means, like, get stop hiding, come out from underneath, and start fighting back. Stand up for yourself. Now, if for those of you who understood it the first time I said the metaphor, and you know, why are you explaining this? Believe it or not, but there are some people, especially narcissists, who don't, can't process or understand a metaphor or an example. It goes right over their head. Why? Because that's a right brain example. It's a right brain process. So if you're not a right brain person, you're not going to understand these metaphors or examples. It's going to go right over your head. And that is why you guys like this channel, is because most of you are probably right brain people. And remember, I'm not saving the world. I'm saving the good people. God bless you guys. All right, so remember, Jesus is awesome. Kick ass, take names, and live your life to the fullest. All right, remember, click subscribe, click that like button, make a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.